How's it going, everybody? It's me, Shane. I'm here to give you another Digimon Adventure 2020 episode preview and recap. Today's episode is episode 60, Vikemon Ventures the Glaciers. So, obviously, you know what's going to happen in that one. Wink. Uh, as always, please remember to give me a like, comment, and subscribe. I really do appreciate every last one of you that sit through, listen to my wonderful dose of tones and my opinions on things that technically don't matter in the world, but they matter to us. Um... So, if we just going to go right into it, I didn't write any notes down, but I might write some stuff if I think of anything. Um, we do do a quick little visual recap where we see Joe Keto, how first he was at the hot spring, made friends at the hot spring with Nanimon and Blossomon. They had to fight Tone Sama Gekomon and Kabukimon and his minions to free that hot spring and make it available for everybody. And now we are in another frozen wasteland. It's just it's strange. All the all of his Digimon pals are walking behind him. And Joe and Goldmon are wondering how the heck did they get there. And as they're making their moves and as they're walking through, their pals are slowly falling down. They're they're tired, they're they're frozen. They're about to be frozen solid. And as Joe himself falls over, don't know where him and Goldmon got their I don't know where they got their coats from, but that's that's a really cool thing that they can get any type of uh, weather wear that they need in the digital world. He's looking up at the sky and he's wondering, heavens, why have you forsaken me? And as if to answer Joe's call, we have Mimi on and Palmon on top of a Blintmon. Blintmon, we saw him earlier on, I believe, when we got to see Jagamon, the potato Digimon. Uh, it's a champion level Blimp Digimon. If you go back, you'll probably find it. I don't want to waste your time showing that Digimon again. Really interesting Digimon, but yeah, she's wondering what they what are they doing there. And we get a nice little pan to a pirate ship going down a little riverway. We find out there's a riverway riverway later. And we get our first glimpse of a new Digimon. Uh we get to see this guy, Gawapamon. Gawapamon. It's obviously a Kappa mixed with a rapper. Um I always say favorite Digimon. Guys, if you see my social media, it's Turtles and Tentacles. I like turtley things. This cap is a Turtles. Um, this this one here is actually at the... What are the positions on the ship? It is in the crow's nest being the lookout. And it's actually... See their Blimpmon passing through on the side of the glacier. Um, this guy, I'm going to read you his encyclopedia. He's a champion level cyborg data type. His first time appearing was actually in Digimon Savers, where he is the partner of Yushima Hiroshi. Don't know what his English name was, because I actually watched Digimon Savers in Japanese many years ago. It is a cyborg Digimon that fused from the data of a music player and legendary animal Kappa. It has always listened to his favorite music and bright and cheerful spirits, but it sheds tears if the disc-like part on his head is ever damaged. The special moves are rapidly spinning the disc on his head and shooting off called DJ Shooter and striking a tech oh and a striking technique released from its extensible hands called Guapa Punch. <clears throat> also surprises the enemy with this mysterious dance known as Guapa Rappa. I like all the puns that they do on this. Which um I guess I'm gonna tune you into some of my folklore. Kappas tend to have uh, traditional Japanese folklore. A kind of a crown or a bowl of water in their heads and Kappa can be good or evil or mischievous and if you ever find one getting ready to eat you especially if you're a child and you don't have a cucumber to give them what you tend to, to do is if you can trick them into bowing their head and releasing the water from there they are severely weakened the more you know that's probably why if the disc is broken they are severely severely injured uh, get back to my good old notes here. And the Guapamon spots the Blimpmon. Shouts out to the Chief, saying, Chief, we got, we got people on our side. And the Chief, this giant Digimon obscured by the shadows, says, call me Shogun. And then we have Hangiomon. <clears throat> this guy actually has an English name. You might know him as Divermon. Yeah, look at him there, a little fishy, fish-faced Divermon. Actually... I can't, I, I, I know, I know this guy first shows up in the original uh, Digimon Adventure, 
Also showed up in Digimon Retro 2. Showed up in Tamers. And showed up in the Tamers movie. I'm Now I'm looking at this. Showed up in the Cross Wars, Digimon Try, and now here. <clears throat> uh, this is actually one of the older Digimon. He is a ultimate level aquatic beast. Beast man data type. I believe when we first see him, it actually works. This Digimon works for Metal Seedramon. If you would give me a moment, I'll go ahead and read you some of his encyclopedia as well. As I said before, he's an aquatic beast man Digimon clothed in a wetsuit. <clears throat> it has a cheerful personality and is always... <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> and is... <clears throat> Is always swimming around the net ocean. His specialty is moving in the water and in battle it uses high speed underwater mobility. It has a motor on its back and it uses a fighting style that capitalizes on the speed. The special move it has is stabbing with its cherished harpoon torrent and it's known as striking fish attack. So we've already have our champion. We got our ultimate ultimates, multiple ultimates on board. And Hyogamon is at the helm, which is the the steering wheel of the boat and it's you know again saying it calls him boss and of course this digimon says call me shogun <clears throat> he tells the crew to go after them so finally they'll have something to capture and meanwhile mimi is saying that her and the school were going on a school field trip so they can show others what is beyond the cloud continent which that's actually a really good uh, field trip granted you have a chosen one and her partner with you you can easily be protected and Bancho Mamimon is actually with him as well. So Joe eat, you know, he's eating. And we see all of the other Digimon are eating warm, it looks like soup, maybe warm soup, um, being served by the, I saw the Lalamon and other Digimon there. And Joe thanks them and Bancho Mamimon wonders, you know, what should they do with the weirdos? He's talking about Tano Sama Gekko Mon and Kabuki Mon. And of course, you know, those two are going to want to fight with Bancho Mamimon, who's still a really huge bean. Um, <clears throat> and Palmon use her whips, whips the ground, stops all of them, and says, fighting is a no-no. I find it quite interesting that we have Omega, an ultimate, and armor level Digimon listening to Palmon, that maybe they can sense, maybe they know right from wrong, or maybe they can just sense a type of authoritative aura from her. I found, I found that kind of interesting, just personally. <clears throat> but it seems that, uh, oh, I already said that part. So, Everyone's wondering, you know, what happened. How did Joe and his merry band end up in the uh, wasteland? Well, one day, you know, they come back to the hot springs and it's all dried up. Even Kabuki Mon says, yeah, you know, we didn't dry this one up. We have no idea what's going on. But hearsay says, far south, there's warmer weather, there's warmer land. Perhaps we can get there. And Joe says, you know what? I'll lead you. And then they made it halfway and fainted. <clears throat> So that's how they, that's just what it is. And uh, suddenly, Blimpmon is starting to rock because they're being fired upon from the pirate ship. When uh, asked who is the leader, because this giant shadow figure is like, who's your leader? Mimi hides underneath Joe's coat and is literally uh, weekend at Bernie's, doing the weekend at Bernie's thing and moving him around and speaking on his behalf. Joe is not even moving his lips. He's just kind of like, I'm here. This is just what's happening. And she says it is. <laughs> she she speaks up saying that he is Captain Joe. She's asking Simp. She says, "Simp, by please, please, just speak up for this." And all the others are surprised that there's a hey, there's a human. And Ogemon is the captain of these pirates. <clears throat> He's the one Digimon that apparently has been talked about all around, according to Pancho Mami Mon. And one saying, "Man, you're really you're really well well informed." Apparently, there's an almighty Mami Mon network. If you're a hardcore fan or if you're a big fan of Digimon, you and I told you before, there are tons of Mami Mon. I love Metal Tyran uh, Metal Mami Mon and Tyranimon Mon Mami Mon. T there's tons of them. Big Mami Mon, Bacho Mami Mon, King Mami Mon, Prince Mami Mon. But I mentioned Ol Oleg Mon. This Oleg Mon. He's all gold. They were actually in awe of him being in all gold. Here's a better anime picture of him. Now, guys, I don't know why. I don't know why it's only 
Sora, Taichi, Yamato, and uh, Koshiro, who all take the time to scan and find out more about these Digimon. This is literally, this is a mega level Digimon, a, a marine animal vaccine type, but they don't find out that he's mega. It's easy to tell he's mega based on the title of the show. Uh, he does first show up in Cross Wars, so again, more branding, showing more Digimon from different shows. Um, he was actually one of the seven Death Generals. He used to manipulate the Digimon. He really wasn't as nice as he was in this, even trying to just steal their food and stuff let me go ahead and just read this very long encyclopedia i promise i won't take that long <clears throat> as a general of the go thief army of the big death stars it is a super heavyweight digimon whose whole body is clad in steel armor with his army which you know runs the whole gamut of atrocities and looting with aquatic and marine mammal animal digimon it plunders treasure wherever it may travel across the ocean it has a weakness for gold and silver treasures so it Collected treasures become Ogemon's entire diet. I would imagine that a Digimon has gold chest on his shoulders would eat silver and gold. <clears throat> and this increases Ogemon's armor if it eats enough. Ogemon boasts the most superhuman strength amongst the other generals. And, you know, easily wielding his super heavy dual tomahawk, a pair of axes, and it effortlessly hurls them with its dual tomahawk boomerang attack. Seems like a lot of Digimon have access, have the whole throw and get them back thing. If an opponent suffers its Viking buffet, it is, uh, in which it swings the axis down vertically over and over and over and over. Probably meant to say buffet, but it's a V. Buffet. <clears throat> They'll be chomped to bits in a blanket of Ryan. Also, Ogemon keeps the gigantic shadow called Jung Magador in his chest on its right shoulder and the one called Surter on the left shoulder. So, World Serpent's on the right, Surter's on the left. Surter brings about Ragnarok. I like Norse mythology, see me. <clears throat> also, the World Serpent is a child of Loki, FYI. Both become Fiendish Shadows if an opponent is recognized, and Jung Jordan McGurn on its left shoulder takes them away to Jotunheim. It's funny, I just did a review about a place called Jotunheim. Watch my Suicide Squad review, please. <clears throat> It's said to be the end of the world. With Age of Discovery, that's the name of the attack with the World Serpent. Uh, Surter on his left asks the opponents, uh, you know, whatever wish they have, and it grants them with dreams come true, but avoids granting the wish using a convenient interpretation from Ogemon, which means, uh, you know, I wish I had gold. Cool. Smash it over the head with gold. And if, on the other hand, the opponent suddenly refuses to make a wish, it just attacks over and over again. So. A very uh, interesting Digimon that happened to emerge from a, a more or less uh, weird show. I would keep telling you guys Cross Wars had no levels, but I'm glad we're catching up by giving these Digimon levels so that we can understand their true power level. So, <clears throat> everyone's wondering what is a pirate ship doing on the river? Again, I just read you they go about the seven seas, so why are they on a river? Well... Ogamon just says, again, give me your food. And Mimi again speaks for Joe, saying that, you know, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to fight you. <laughs> and Joe's being brave about it. So, you know, now they're getting hit over and over again. They're trying to go to the sky. And Joe's wondering, do we have any ammo? Conveniently, Blimpmon has run out of ammo. I didn't know that Machine Digimon could run out of ammo. Uh, apparently, Babamon has been selfish. I and mean, there's a... A not accurate statue of uh, Babamon, probably what Babamon thinks that Babamon looks like, being all, I guess, attractive or whatever. And unfortunately, Bancho Mami Mon's uh, golden bat, it's broken and it's being repaired. I wonder if it got broken in training fighting with uh, Rosemon. It's actually an interesting thing to think about. <clears throat> so they're moving towards more open water. You know, there's a, a circle, circlet kind of area. I don't want to call it basin because there's multiple waterfalls in this area. Excuse me. And suddenly, Thomas on a Gekamon, a Hey Shogun Gekamon, uses his, his song attack to make a barrier around the blimp. Gives them enough time for them to go higher and the attacks to not phase them. Unfortunately, he falls overboard and is clinging to the side of Blimpmon. 
Another attack hits. Jill and Goma fall over. Palamon couldn't reach them in time. They hit Tonasama Gekamon and all of them fly off. Joe wakes up. They are now in a cage. Goldmon informs them that they were captured by the crew. They move uh, the large uh, Tonasama Gekomon someplace else because they can't put him in there. He's too big. Um, <clears throat> so uh, he, Joe just flat out tells Goldmon, yeah, you know, break open his lock. It wasn't all that hard at all. And when they were moving through, they look and they notice the kitchen is completely bare. A Gawapamon catches them. Yeah, you know, catches them trying to flee. And with a little bit of chase, it passes out because it's too exhausted. It's too hungry. Now, the other Hyungomon, or Dairamon, if it's easier for you, uh, says to Olgemon, apparently, uh, some of, you know, our smaller prisoners have escaped. And he's like, nah, it's all right. You know, I got a plan. He has a plan for when others are coming through. And others are coming through with Blintmon holding, you know, each group that's going to fight in his hands. The plan was for Bancho Mami Mon to cause a ruckus and for Mimi and Palmon to sneak in, but they see Tanosame Gekamon at the ship's, is it the bow? The, the front of the ship, the ship's bow, usually where they, there's like a work of art there. He's hanging from there and they're being cowardly because they're using a hostage. Ogemon says, yeah, trade your food, we'll give you your guy back. And Bacha Mama's kind of confused after Mimi says this is a dirty trick because he's never heard of Ogemon being cowardly and using tricks. Interesting. Guapamon says that all of them are finished. They had to leave from their land to look for food. The seas were contaminated. The mountain was dying. There's nothing on the leaves. And, you know, they were slowly starting to starve. Ogemon packs up everything that they have and takes everyone with them and vows to get them to a new land so they don't die. And Joe, Joe's listening to it. He's like, okay, all right. But over the time, you know, the seas were empty and somehow they wandered into the river. <clears throat> Joe, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Joe and Goldman popped their heads over Olgamon, uh, uh, which I think this name comes from like a uh, another Mor Norse mythology. Kind of reminds me of like an opera singer. But I digress. He's giving them a 10 count. So he's counting from 10 to 1. Saying, hey, you can give us a food or, you know, face the consequences. And Goldmon's saying, hey, Joe, I can fight if you want me to. And at the count of 1, Joe appears with all his courage. He has a very cool interest because he's now wearing that coat as a cape. Very regal, very leader-like. Uh, I, like, I like that aesthetic a lot. The one where the long coats are used as capes. It's a Yu-Gi-Oh thing. It's a one-piece thing. It's a I, I enjoy that aesthetic a lot. <clears throat> so he's saying, as his pride as a leader, he's gonna challenge him and you know fight for this food. If you if you know if they win, they give him the food. And Ogamon steps it up and he said, How about this? Since you you're pretty funny for a human, if we win, not only do we get the food, you become my lackey. And Joe says, All right, then you become my lackey, then if I win. They agree. They move from the ship to a glacier that's nearby so they don't destroy the ship. And <clears throat> it's it's time to go. With the with the nice little Digivice glow, we go from Goemon to Kakumon. Ogemon says, hey, I'm going to fight with the handicap since, you know, he, he said he was okay with both Goemon and Joe fighting together because obviously they're a pair. And he's going to give them the first, the first attack. He's cool with the whole handicap. So, with Harpoon Vulcans firing from Ikakumon, you know, he's catching them in his massive, massive hand. They were able to jump up, hit him point blank in the face. Doesn't work. He's like, I know you're holding back. Cool. Another bright shine. We go to Zudamon. So now Zudamon, and, this, and once he, when he sees Zudamon, he busts out one of his axes. He does uh, Thor's hammer, which is actually really cool. They said Thor's hammer, not Molnir, which is, it's going to be interesting when I tell you later. And when uh, Ogamon is slicing at him, it barely misses him. You know, he, uh, Zudamon's throwing his hammer. And, then, you know, once Ogamon dodges it, does a shoulder check, hits him in the face. The hammer comes up from the ground, hit him again. It does a, uh, what's it, Vulcan spark. And it looked like the spark had actually split him in half. But through the clouds and everything, Zudamon is hit by two axes. 
Now he has a red axe and a blue axe, just like the picture I showed you. I didn't even know he had twin axes until this happened. <clears throat> and the axes, you know, hit Zudamon and come back to him. Ogumon just throws him on the ground. He's coming in. He's walloping him with those massive arms, just punching him and saying, what happened to your pride as a leader? You know, Zudamon's getting pummeled. Of course, in this show, both, uh, both the Chosen One and their partner Digimon, they're fighting together. Joe's on top of Zudamon, so he's every bit as hurt as Zudamon is. And, you know, he's saying, I'm not going to take your crew's life. I just want the food. And Joe's upset. You know, he's apologizing for, uh, Ogumon's apologizing for being cowardly. And Joe says, I heard the only reason you became a pirate was to save your people. And he's like, and that's why I can't lose this battle. And Joe says, I'm exactly the same. I'm doing this for somebody else. And Zudamon is basically saying, you know, an enorm enormous power comes from them comes from Joe when it's time to fight for someone else. So I don't know if in Japanese if this is the crest of reliability, but when it's time to fight for someone else, it is a, a cross too. The the crest is essentially a you know Christian cross, but you know some triangles around the four points. Saying whenever he uh is fighting for someone else, enormous power emerges. And he says, as a matter of fact, when I fight with Joe, I get stronger. And we're getting flashbacks. One of my favorite flashbacks. I use it as a thumbnail. Was Joe with the hammer coming down on Potato Mon? I call him Potato Mon. It's Jagamon. The music is swelling. We get break the chain coming through. And he says, "Joe, let's show him." Joe says, "Let's show him our true power." That fool. I don't know how they can get this thing to shine bright when Joe's color is technically black, but they do. And we get the evolution into Vikemon. And the evolution is. So weird that Joe gets some of the better evolutions. Like, Vikemon, the, the whole body of uh, Zudamon becomes blue. And it's just like breaking through it with both of the giant maces coming through. Which, he's like, giant maces? This guy here. Oh, look at him. Look at this guy. This is also a nice little older Digimon, too, for you. This is one of those Digimon that, before they had Megas, they were calling him an ultimate. And funny enough, side story, a lot of people don't like Vikemon as Goemon's Mega because they're like, we want a more fishy Digimon. There's Plesiomon, which is a possible Mega evolution for them. But I'm going to zoom in on this picture on the encycl encyclopedia page. If you notice here, he literally looks like you take Ikakumon and Zudamon and just squish them together. You get this guy. And I kind of prefer that. This is an aquatic Digimon that can also fight on the land. I mean, I know most things, especially with Pokemon and Digimon, things that belong in the sea do tend to float a bit, but I like this a lot more. Uh, let's just read a little bit. His first, he actually first shows up in Digimon Try with Joe working with Mimi and they get uh, Vikemon and Rosemon. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. <clears throat> He's a Beastman type Mega Digimon who governs the freezing lands of the permafrost <clears throat> where nothing ever thaws. Its fur has become like ice crystals and is said to be as hard as chrome digizoid, one of the hardest metal in Digimon. <clears throat> well, one of the hardest metals in Digimon. With the Morning Star, Monir, that's literally, instead of Thor's hammer being called Monir, both of the uh, Morning Stars are called Monir. It carries them on his back and it can annihilate a mountain in one swing. Distorting space itself. It manages it manages the Kakumon and Zudamon corpse, and though in the midst of battle it appears as a heartless berserker, it shows a you know face of great compassion for its subordinates. A special move is Arctic Blizzard, momentarily bringing the surrounding atmosphere to an absolute zero, flash freezing the opponent, and it then smashes them with Monir. You know, the opponent's smashed body becomes like a blizzard, and what gave this attack its name? So, apparently it has other moves called Viking Axe, which, like, it's not really an axe. It, it chains both of the morning, morning stars together and uses them, but eh, that's that's neither here nor there. Let me go back. And as most people know from, just for, even from the MCU, Molnir is technically the legendary hammer that Thor uses. Well, Vikemon, not Vikemon, uh, Ogamon's coming in with his two axes. He's coming in with his maces. They both clash, and this clash, this is just one straight clash. The animation on this is fantastic, by the way. Sparks everywhere, is brightly flashing, and Vikemon is like, we gotta give it to him, Joe, and Joe's like, ah, oh, and they're like, ah, oh, and yeah, once 
once you know those two maces come through, they break the axis, which sends Oman kind of reeling back. He does the Arctic Blizzard move, which makes a giant ice tornado, which sends this Vike again. Ogemon is massive. Vikemon is massive. These are Mega Digimon. They get this big now. Up in the air. Lands on his ship. Breaking the mast. The mast is where the sails are. Breaking the mast. He's half frozen over. And he's like, right, we lost, guys. This was my defeat. And, of course, Joe comes in, sitting cross legs style on top of Vikemon's head and says, all right, now I'm going to tell my lackey what to do. Obviously, Joe's a kind soul. He's not going to do anything too bad there. Literally having Bluntmon tow the ship. And they're pulling the ship all the way until they see the uh, the island that they're on. Well, I call it island, but it's a, it's a land. So they see a land that they get to. You know, Mimi, Mimi can't even believe that they're actually carrying the others. And Bancho Mama says, I, I get it. You know, once you've had a fight, cross fist with someone, you tend to understand them more. Which is exactly what happened with him. Fighting with not only Rosemon, but fighting with Babamon. So he gets it. Uh, Ogamon says, man, you're like a Shogun. And all of his subordinates call him Shogun. Um, they didn't call Ogamon Shogun, they called Joe Shogun. But then Tanisama Gakamon says, you know, you're our lord. And Bancho Mamimon says, no, you're, you're, you're a Bancho too. So Joe is picking up title after title throughout this series. Uh, his Digivice goes off with the little arrow, but then his crest appears. Just like, and Mimi said, just like me, you got your crest. But out of nowhere... From the thicket of the the brush of the wood, here's Taichi and Agamon. He's like, hey, guys. They're like, where are you coming from? I'm being led around by this. And you see his compass going crazy. He's like, hey, so what did I miss? And Joe says, it's it, it's a little bit. It's a lot to tell you. We get a nice little joke with Goemon and Joe. He's calling them Shogun. And even Taichi's like, what? And that's our episode. Of course, the encyclopedia is with Vikemon. Um, Goemon steps in and says, yeah, you know, I feel like a king with all this fur and that horn helmet. And of course, he's going to make Joe dress the same, which uh, Koshiro is very jealous of. Next episode looks like uh, Tankaru's heart is going to try to get Elder Rodimon to go back home. Don't know what that means, but it looks like the next Encyclopedia Digimon might be the bad guy. Um, if you remember that Digimon that both Tai and Yamato had to fight. That was that giant miasma. I think he was Mistmon. Mistmon had two forms. He had that original tiger fluid form and another solid form. It looks like they're going to fight that. Uh, and that's our episode. So what would I give this episode? Well, I'm going to give it I'm gonna give it four to five. I actually really, really enjoyed it. Um, did a lot. Did a lot of callbacks. The, the, the build up and culmination of both Joe and Goemon as being these helpful people that, you know, for themselves, they don't tend to, you know, he doesn't like to get, put himself out there. But when it comes to helping others, he's definitely going to move forward with helping anybody. Um, music was fine. Animation for their fight was great. It was a really good anime fight. No weird animations at all. And uh, yeah, for anybody who, so is anybody going to complain that Mimi showed up? Are you? Are you people? Are you mad that Ty showed up at the last literal 30, not even 30 seconds, the last 15 to 20 seconds of this episode? Do you got anything to complain about now? Do you? I didn't think so. I didn't think so at all. So, let me know if you enjoyed this episode. Please hit me up with a comment down below. As always, give me a like. In addition to the comment, hit the subscribe button. If you're not already subscribed here, hit the notification button to get notified of more videos like this. We're reviewing Digimon every Sunday, guys. That's the drill. And we're actually almost done. Yeah. I think there's maybe five more episodes left. Five or six more episodes left. So, it's been a wild ride with this show. I'm looking forward to seeing how it ends. As always, thank you. I appreciate you all. Be good. Be blessed. Wash your hands. Wear a mask, please. Black Lives Matter. Be good to yourself. And be good to others, please. Don't be a jerk. And I will definitely see you next time.